You can look at our homework that we had over the weekend. The first bit of it was page 600, question 1 and 2A. Any issues with either of those questions, number 1 or 2A? Perfect. We'll go over number 1 then. It says, an electron with a charge of magnitude 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and a mass of 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And they give us some data here that they don't really need to give us. Where would we find this if, if they don't give us this data in the, in the question itself? Yeah, we're going to get it on the data sheet, right? It's traveling west along the surface of the Earth at the equator. The magnitude of the magnetic field at this location is 5 times 10 to the minus 5, which is a really typical magnetic field strength caused by the Earth. What minimum speed must the electron maintain uh, to remain at the same height above the Earth's surface? What's the key word or key phrase in this question that's going to lead us to what we're going to do to solve this question? Carrie? Yeah, maintain the same height above the Earth's surface. We saw another one here a couple of days ago, I think Thursday or Friday last week, where um, I think it said it was, it was balanced in a gravitational and a magnetic field. And that means that the magnetic force had to be equal to balanced with or equal to uh, the magnetic force and the gravitational force. Here we're talking about uh, the charged particle maintaining the same height above the Earth's surface. Two forces have to balance there as well, right? If it's not going up, or down, then there has to be balanced forces up and down. Uh, the downward force, of course, would be gravity, and presumably the upward force would be the magnetic force that have to balance each other. Let's just double check this. Hey, let's just double check to make sure the magnetic force would, in fact, be upwards. Um, we've got a negative particle. Gonna, everybody's going to do the hand roll here, the, the hand roll for deflection, just as practice, okay? Everybody do it now. Take your left hand out. It's a negative particle, so it's going to be left hand. We've got a particle that's going west along the surface of the Earth at the equator. That's west. Okay, we can look at the we can look at the uh, window and see the mountains out there. We know that's west. Okay, in the end, if you happen to be in the cafeteria writing your diploma exam and you get kind of turned around and you're not sure which way is west and which way is east, just think left is west. Okay, left is west. Whichever way you are, even if you're facing this way, you can think uh, left is west, right? Okay, as long as you use north, south, east, and west okay, relative to the same frame of reference. Okay? Um, you know what? We'll do it from your frame of reference right now. You guys are looking the other way. Okay? Let's assume that you don't see the mountains out there. Okay? Picture it. This is left. Okay, this is west. Um, the magnetic field goes towards magnetic south, okay, towards the Arctic, which, which, of course, we think of as the North Pole. It's uh, away from us here. So we're going to say thumb, fingers, point towards uh, the magnetic south pole, palms pointing upwards. So sure enough, the magnetic force is upwards. Right? Does that make sense? If you actually know which way west is and which way magnetic south is, actually goes this way and this way, right? Thumb, fingers, lo and behold, the magnetic force is still upwards. So as long as you're consistent with west and magnetic south, the direction of the magnetic field, it doesn't really matter uh, which way your body is turned and which way you assume is west, as long as you're consistent with that with all your other directions. All right, so, so the forces are opposite in direction. That means they do have the possibility of balancing. And if we're talking about maintaining the same height, then they must balance. Magnetic force is equal to the gravitational force. Or we're going to say QVB, QV perpendicular B, is equal to M times G. Now, if the charged particle is moving west, and the magnetic field is towards magnetic south, they're perpendicular to each other, so we're allowed to use the hand rule, and we're allowed to use that equation. We're looking for V now. V perpendicular is equal to mg over V, uh, sorry, over Q times B. And when we plug our numbers in here, I think we should have no problem getting the answer that they give us, which is 1.12 times 10 to the minus 6 meters per second. You guys okay with that? Everybody got that? Good. Good. All right. Let's take a look at the worksheet that we had for homework last night then. It was uh, worksheet number 11, questions number 1 to 9. We'll put some answers here. You guys can take a peek at them. And then we'll pick uh, two or three of those questions or more to go over. They're all hand rules, so they all should go pretty quickly for us. If we need to go over more than a couple, we will. Let's take a peek at those. And then let me know which ones you need gone over. Okay, let's have a question. Let's have a quick look at question two, six, and eight on worksheet number eleven. Then number two says, 
An electron travels into the page through a magnetic field that points to the left of the page. Which way does the magnetic force point? Now, this is a perfect example of using our page as the frame of reference and expressing our answer using the page as a frame of reference, right? Does, it, it, when we're talking about the Earth as a frame of reference, it doesn't matter which way our pay, page is oriented, vertically like mine is on the board here or horizontally like yours is on your desk. Okay, but for this, um, for this one, um, since we're talking about uh, the page, uh, we have to make sure that we, we do our hand relative to that page. So, for instance, for me, when I say an electron is traveling into the page, I would say thumb this way, magnetic field points towards the left of the page, I put my fingers this way. My palm actually points downwards, right? For you guys, with your page horizontally, you would stick your thumb into the page, which would be toward the ground, fingers this way towards the left, and palm would point this way. Bottom line is, no matter how your page is oriented, like mine or like yours, my palm points toward the bottom of the page. So thumb, fingers, don't say down, because the earth isn't our frame of reference. Say toward the bottom of the page. Okay? Number six. Six I wanted to do as well. An alpha particle travels out of the page. We should probably circle this, draw attention to the fact that it's a positive particle, right? And if we have to use a hand rule, it's going to be a right-hand rule. The alpha particle travels out of the page through a magnetic field that points into the page, which directs as a magnetic force point. How do we do a hand rule when the charged particle and the, and the magnetic field are opposite in direction to each other? Didn't we say the hand rule is only valid if they're perpendicular to each other, 90 degrees to each other? Listen, I don't know about you, but I can't bring my thumb back to make it 180 degrees with my fingers, okay? Something tells me that my thumb's not going to work very well if I try to do that. So the hand rule's not going to work. Which way is the force acting when the charged particle is moving one way and the magnetic field is opposite to that? Zero. Magnetic force is zero, right? The, the hand rule works whenever the field and the particle are parallel to each other, sort of perpendicular to each other. When they're parallel to each other, the magnetic force is zero. So which way does it point? Well, there is no magnetic force, so we wouldn't say it points in any direction. And finally, question number eight says, an alpha particle traveling into the page. Let's circle this alpha particle again. Remind us that it's a positive particle. You can use our right-hand rule. Traveling into the page experiences a magnetic force to the right of the page. Which direction does the field point? This is uh, this is uh, a page is our frame of reference as opposed to north, south, east, west, the Earth. And we're talking about a, a, a right-hand rule, a positive particle, and we're talking about rearranging it because we're trying to find the direction of the field, not the force. So there's all kinds of things we've got to worry about here. Alpha particle traveling into the page, right thumb into the page. Okay. So for you guys, your right thumb goes this way. For me, because my page is vertical, my right, my right thumb goes this way. Thumb towards, the, towards uh, into the page. Magnetic force is towards the right side of the page. So that means my fingers have to be extended and my palm has to point towards the right side of the page. Thumb towards the uh, end of the page, palm towards the right. So for you guys, it's this way, right? Thumb, palm, this way. For me, my fingers end up pointing upwards. For you, your fingers end up pointing towards the front of the room. How do we agree on a way to express that? Towards the top of the page, right? So my fingers point toward the top of the page, and because your page is horizontal, your fingers point towards the top of the page as well. So you say up the page, toward the top of the page, something like that. But don't say up, right? Because for, because for me, my fingers would point up but only because my page is vertical. For you, your fingers would point towards the front of the room. Okay. The page is our frame of reference. It's toward the top of the page, uh, regardless of how our page is, is set up. Good. All right. Let's, uh, let's try a multiple choice question here this morning. I'll refer you to multiple choice number 72 in your worksheet booklet. And I'll keep the diagram up on the board for you. 
All right, let's have a look at this as a group now. The question says, moving electrons can be deflected by electric fields, gravitational fields, and magnetic fields. We know this, right? Um, moving electrons uh, are deflected by electric fields because charged particles experience a force in an electric field. Positive particles experience a force in the direction of the field. Negative particles experience a force opposite to the direction of the field. They're also deflected by gravitational fields because charged particles have mass, and particles of mass experience gravity and are therefore uh, deflected by those gravitational fields. And the moving charges also experience a magnetic force. Stationary charges don't, but moving charges experience a magnetic force, and therefore they're deflected by magnetic fields. In order to determine the direction of a magnetic force, we'd have to use a hand rule, right? the left-hand rule or the right-hand rule, depending upon whether you're, it's a negative particle or positive particle. We're talking about electrons, so it would be a left-hand rule here. So gravity, the charged particles experience a force in the same direction as the field, right? Field is downward, gravitational force is downward. Uh, electric field, a positive particle experiences a force with the field, negative particle experiences a force opposite to the field. And a magnetic field, if the charged particle is moving, it experiences a magnetic force according to the hand rule for deflection. All right? So, what do we want to do in this question? Notice what we've just done. Hey, notice what we've just done. We've given some thought to the question, right? Before we actually read the question. Okay, we're looking at what's really going on in this question. And we talk about that lots. We talk about that every day. Okay, looking at what's going on in the question before you get too um, focused on exactly what's being asked here. All right, now it's time to figure out what's being asked, Bill. If the electron is deflected downward in, every, in each of the fields, then what do those fields have to be? Okay, so if a charged particle experiences a force downwards in all three of these, what kind of fields do we have? In other words, what kind of field do we have to have if a negatively charged particle experiences an upward force, sorry, a, a downward force in an upward field? What kind of field is that got to be? Charged particle experiences a downward force in an upward field. That's got to be an electric field, right? A magnetic force would be perpendicular to the direction of the field. A gravitational force would be in the same direction as the field. This one's got to be electric. Okay, what about the second one? You've got a downward force in a field that's into the page. That doesn't sound like gravity at all, does it? If it's gravity, then you're going to have a downward force in a downward field, like field number three. So this one looks like it's going to be magnetic, but let's just double check that with a hand rule. We've got a negative particle that's going towards the right. We've got our fingers, okay, so thumb towards the right, fingers in the direction of the field, which is into the page here. So thumb, fingers into the page, palm's going to point downward. Sure enough, a negative particle going to the right with a field into the page would experience a magnetic force toward the bottom of the page. So what do we got here? Field number one is electric, field number two is magnetic, and field number three is gravitational, A. How many people said A? Good. Excellent. All right, let's do a little bit of new stuff here today. Still related to what we've been doing, nothing, uh, nothing groundbreaking here, but just a little bit more detail on what we've been doing. Let me draw a magnetic field. This magnetic field is going to be going into the page, but I could easily have it drawn out of the page as well. Let's say we've got a charged particle. Let's make it a negatively charged particle going towards the towards the right. Now that charged particle generates its own magnetic field. We could find the direction of that magnetic field by the wire grasp rule. We'd say thumb in the direction of the particle, fingers in the direction of the field bent, right? The, the magnetic field would go, if we wanted to draw the magnetic field caused by that moving charge, it would go counterclockwise. That's not the point of what I want to do here right now, though. Okay, we know there would be a magnetic field, it would be counterclockwise, but I don't want to determine the direction of the field caused by that moving particle. Um, sorry, that's wrong actually, isn't it? I said it would be counterclockwise. It wouldn't be, because I just put my thumb into the page, right? Okay, my thumb should be pointed towards the right side of the page. 
So if we're looking at the magnetic field that's caused by that moving charge, it would be into the page above, above the particle, out of the page, below the particle. It would be toward the top of the page, in front of the particle, and so on. Okay, does it make sense? That's not what I'm trying to show you in this, but I don't want to lead you down a wrong path with my wrong diagram first here. All right, it does generate its own magnetic field. There's an external magnetic field caused by something, caused by the Earth, caused by the bar magnets, caused by something. It's this external magnetic field right here. It's pointing into the page. Those two magnetic fields will interact in such a way to produce a force. Let's determine the direction of the force on this moving charge here. Okay, this is the hand rule for deflection, negative particle, so it's left hand. Everybody do this, okay? Thumb in the direction of the particle, which is towards the right. Fingers stretched out, because it's the handle for deflection. Palm points toward the bottom of the page. So the magnetic force is toward the bottom of the page. Our little key here is going to make V, uh, sorry, is going to make um, blue the velocity of the particle and red is going to be the magnetic force. So the particle is moving to the right, it experiences a magnetic force toward the bottom of the page. What's going to happen to this negative particle, this electron, as it's moving towards the right side of the page, but it experiences a force towards the bottom of the page? It's going to go somewhere in between, right? It's going to probably go somewhere down here. It wants to go to the right because of its inertia, but yet a force pushes it downward and ends up going somewhere in between. Okay, let's determine the direction of the magnetic force on it now because the direction of the velocity has changed, so the direction of the force will change as well. Thumb kind of down and to the right, stretched out fingers into the page, palm points down and to the left. Palm's going to point this way somewhere. So where's the particle going to go now? Somewhere down here. Let's do it again. Thumb in the direction of the particle, which is toward the bottom of the page. Fingers field into the page. Palm points toward the left. It's going to go somewhere in between. Thumb points in the direction of the particle, down and to the left. Fingers into the page. Palm points up and to the left. What are you starting to notice about this? What's the shape of the path of this particle as it goes through perpendicular through an external magnetic field, Kerry? The force points in the same direction, yeah. Okay, the magnetic force points in the same direction. What direction does it point? Where does it always point toward? Which direction is it always pointing toward? Uh, not the producer. We don't have a producer right here. There's just there's a spot right here, but it's not. A, there's no producer, right? This is the charged particle that's making a field. This is a magnetic field that was already there. Okay, it's kind of going around uh, an imaginary point, right? But what is that? What could we call that imaginary point? The center. The center of a... Eh, the center of a... What's the shape? What is it? It's a circle. It's the center of a circle, yeah. Look, this is the shape of the particle. As it's in the magnetic field, it's a circle. Now, as it leaves the magnetic field, it would start going out in a straight line again, right? Because there's nothing to apply a force on it to cause it to leave its straight line path. Here's the deal. If a charged particle is moving through a magnetic field and it's perpendicular to that magnetic field, it will always, every single time, while it's exposed to the magnetic field, go in a circular path. Now, you guys did some questions over the weekend for homework on charged particles and magnetic fields. We didn't talk about anything to do with a circular, circular path. 
that, that that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily relevant to every question, but it does mean that it happens in every question, unless there's something else to balance out the magnetic force. In the absence of any other forces, you get a charged particle moving through a magnetic field. As long as it's exposed to the perpendicular magnetic field, it will go in a circular path every single time. So that means that the equation that we learned last week that describes this, the magnetic force is equal to QVB, that's still applicable. Okay, we're still allowed to use FC is equal to QVB. Sorry, FM is equal to QVB. Still allowed to use that, right? Just because we now know more about it doesn't want it mean what we knew about it last week isn't right. The magnetic force on this charged particle at every given point in this circle is equal to QVB. But we now have another equation that we're allowed to use whenever a charged particle is in the magnetic field as well. Anybody want to take a stab at what it is? Harry? Yeah. The centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. You guys remember that from physics 20? Ring a bell? The good news is it is a physics 20 thing, so it's not new to you at all. The bad news is if you look at your equation sheet to try to find that, it's not there anywhere. Fc is equal to mv squared over r. What you will see on your equation sheet is this. Ac, centripetal acceleration, is equal to v squared over r and you'll see A is equal to F over M. If you put those two together, you end up getting F is equal to MV squared over R. So you're either going to remember this equation, F is equal to MV squared over R, or you're going to um, derive it by setting V squared over R equal to F over M. I don't care which one you do. Okay, just don't if you're memorizing it, just don't mix this up with kinetic energy, which sounds silly, right? How can I mix, it, mix this up with kinetic energy? It's actually easier than you think, right? mv squared over r, one-half mv squared. I, I don't know how many times I've seen people write for centripetal force, one-half mv squared over r. Okay, it's, you think it's silly right now? Wait till you're two and a half hours into a diploma exam on the last day of high school that you'll ever have and your mind is kind of mush, and then, you're, you know, then it's easy to make those mistakes, right? By the way, we'll also do this from time to time, set the centripetal force equal to the magnetic force. Because, of course, centripetal force isn't a fundamental force, right? It's, all, it's caused by, in this case, the magnetic force. So it's got to be equal to it, right? Use whichever one of the three seems to work the best. And the questions that you did for homework from your textbook, any questions we've done so far, we haven't used F is equal to MV squared over R because we didn't know it was valid. We used F is equal to QVB. We'd still use that equation for those questions. We still would, even if we were to go back and redo them. But now we also know that in the absence of another force, it's going to travel in a circle. So if we need to, we're also allowed to use mv squared over r or the combination of the two, okay? Yeah, it's only valid if it's a magnetic field that's perpendicular to the way the particle is moving, but any of this analysis that we do is only valid then, right, Kerry? If, if it's parallel, then there is no force. Just goes straight through, right? So the magnetic field is this way, the charged particle is going this way, there is no circle, there is no magnetic force, there's no centripetal force, it just keeps going straight. So the shape of the path of a charged particle in a magnetic field, let's just do a quick little review here. In a magnetic field, let's say particles going this way, magnetic fields going this way, it's going to go like this. That's a circle. How about this one? Let's go back to electric fields for a second just to distinguish between the two of them. A charged particle in an electric field, let's say the electric field is pointing this way, the velocity is this way, the path of that particle is going to look more like this. What do you think the shape of that would be? We're not going to do that analysis right now, but I just want to distinguish between the two. 
shape of the path of a charged particle in a magnetic field would be a circle. The shape of the path of a charged particle in an electric field would be a, not a circle. That's your first hint. Yeah. It's a parabola. Yeah. It's like projectile motion then, right? Okay, obviously we're going to focus on this right now, but I just want to, I want you to understand that it's not the same shape, even though sometimes it kind of looks like it, it's not the same shape. Okay, we got an example that unfortunately you're going to have to copy out because I don't like the ones that they do give you in the textbook. All right, the question says an electron, so it's a, it's a negative particle. It's going to be a left-hand rule if we're going to use a hand rule for it. It's so moving at the speed of 4 times 10 to the 5 to the right through a magnetic field directed into the page. Um, magnetic field is to the right, particle the field is into the page, that means they're perpendicular. That means that everything we've learned so far in this unit, F is equal to QVB, MV squared over R, the whole hand rule, it's all valid because it's perpendicular, right? And you know what? 99 times out of 100, they will be perpendicular. The one time out of 100 that they're not perpendicular, they're going to be parallel. And that's the kind, that's the case that we, that we look forward to, right? Because then it's an easy question. The force is just zero. What's the radius of the path of the electron? And uh, in which direction will it bend? Toward the top, it says up or down, but really it should say toward the top of the page or toward the bottom of the page. All right. Um, well, let's, uh, we know what we have here, right? We have a charged particle moving through a magnetic field. It goes in a circle. Uh, we're allowed to find the direction of the force by the hand rule for deflection. We can find, uh, we're allowed to use QVB, MV squared over R, or the combination of them. Um, what exactly are we going to do? Well, we know the charge and the mass of the electron. I'm not going to write them down just to save some time, but we know what they are. We know what the speed of the electron is. It's 4 times 10 to the 5. We know that the magnetic field has a magnitude of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 Tesla. We want to find the radius of the path. What do you want to do here? F is equal to QVV, F is equal to MV squared over R, or MV squared over R equals QVV, the magnetic force and the centripetal force together. What do you want to try here? Which one though? Which one do you want to rearrange? So the combined one? Okay. FC is equal to FM. I'll tell you what. Probably 80% of the time you're looking for radius in the context of one of these questions, you're going to set the two equal to each other. Okay, the other 20% of the time, you probably just use FC is equal to MV squared over R. You need R. It's got to be MV squared over R or the combination of them, right? 80% of the time, it's probably going to be the combination of them. So try that first, at least. MV squared over R equals QVB. We're going to rearrange this to solve for R. But look, we can simplify it a little bit. There's a V on both sides, so one V cancels. The R is going to go up by multiplying. I've got MV equals QB. R, right, the one V on this side disappeared, the V on this side disappeared, MV is equal to QBR, take the QB down by dividing now, and I end up getting R is equal to MV over QB. So let's use the mass of the electron, as the speed of the electron, Divided by the charge times the magnetic field of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Our answer works out to be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. All right, we got the, the, the radius of the path now. Which way is it going to bend? Toward the top of the page, up the page, or down the page? Well, the charged particles is moving through the magnetic field that's into the page. Charged particles moving to the right. The magnetic force is going to be thumb fingers down, so toward the bottom of the page. Right? 
Here's what I want you to work on now, and you've got quite a bit of time to work here. I would like you to take a look, please, at worksheet number 12. Now that you're almost finished those questions on worksheet number 12, let's take a look at these questions for homework. Check and reflect questions, page 601, number 3 to 6A. So there's a 6B, but you're not going to do it. 3 to 6A, and then 7 to 10. So I'll finish up worksheet number 12 if you haven't, um, and then take a look at worksheet, or uh, check and reflect page 601, number 3 to 6A, and 7 to 10.